Could you build the Tele style guitar kit from the fret wire? Can you do a semi hollow Tele Tele thin line kit? Would love to see a Telecaster build. Could you do a Tele build for your next DIY build? Do the Telecaster guitar kit! Dan, would you ever try a Telecaster kit? Could you please build a Telecaster guitar kit, then mod it? You should do a Telecaster kit! So, Telecaster kit next after the jazz bass? Can we see a DIY Telecaster kit? Okay, I get it. You guys want to see me build a Telecaster style do it yourself kit? Well, since you guys tend to request a Telecaster three times more often than any other guitar, today I have for you three. Three Telecaster kits to unbox and build. These are three completely different kits from three completely different manufacturers, and they come in at three completely different price points, and you guys are gonna help me determine which one is the best value. Now, to keep this video short and entertaining, I'm gonna be blasting through this information really fast, so buckle up. I'm Dan, this is Guns of Guitars, let's get going. First up, let's have a look at this lightweight Telecaster guitar kit from Guitar Fetish. This kit will run you about $89, and when it arrived, it was the best packaged guitar kit that I have ever seen. They crammed this thing full of bubble wrap to ensure a safe delivery. The body is made of, however you pronounce that, We'll just call it baloney. The body is made of baloney wood. Don't worry. I already know in the comments you guys are telling me the correct pronunciation of that word. You always do. And you'll notice that the neck and fretboard are made of maple. Real quick, I want to tell you about a frustration that I have with guitar fetish. This kit was actually supposed to come with a rosewood fretboard. I know that because the title of the page on the website is rosewood fretboard. It has a picture of a rosewood fretboard and in the description it says rosewood fretboard. But in order to get the rosewood fretboard option, you actually have to select it from a drop down menu where the default is set to maple. Now, why they would set the default to maple when the title, description, and picture all show rosewood is beyond me. So, when we ordered it for this review, we thought we were getting a rosewood, but apparently, because we didn't actually select rosewood from the drop down menu, we got a maple one. Now, that's not just the only frustrating thing. The frustrating part is that Guitar Fetish wanted to charge us to replace the maple neck with a rosewood, even though I feel like it wasn't actually our fault. And so we did. We paid for a rosewood replacement and they sent another maple fretboard but that's a whole rant for another video we did eventually get a rosewood one but guitar fetish did kind of blow it so despite them being the best packaging in the industry for guitar kits they sure seem to have a hard time shipping the correct stuff but that's enough about that back to the guitar kit this maple fretboard has frets that have been unleveled uncrowned unpolished untouched also, the fret ends were cut with really sharp burrs that I did need to knock off with a sanding sponge before attempting to play it. And lastly, the nut piece was a bit too tall to get a good playable action. So, to get this guitar playing good, it is going to need some work. This baloney wood body is absolutely gorgeous. I love baloney wood. It's the reason why I've selected it for my custom line of instruments that I'm working on. Pay no attention to that pickguard design. I don't like it either. But I like it because it's really lightweight. It has a beautiful wood grain. And if you'll notice about this particular Telecaster body, it is pre-drilled for a string through bridge, which comes with it. Speaking of the bridge, it is a standard Telecaster style plate that houses the pickup with the bridge saddles, but unlike your typical Telecaster, it has individual saddles for each string to adjust the action and intonation. Also, there was no hole pre-drilled for the bridge ground connect wire, which for this style bridge is not necessary because you can run the wire up through the pickup cavity and bend it over to touch the bridge underneath. However, if you do want to replace it with a different style bridge, you are going to need to figure out how to drill one. The neck and body had a really sloppy fit. The body was just routed with way too loose of tolerances, so this thing does need to be shimmed before it can be built. The electronics came pre-wired as much as possible. All these components were pre-installed in the control plate. All you gotta do is solder the pickups to the switch and then your hot and ground output to the output jack. Easy peasy. However, it does not come with any build instructions whatsoever, so you have to go online to figure out how you're supposed to wire up their switch. Speaking of wiring up the selector switch, when I followed their diagram online, it actually wired it up backwards so that this is actually the bridge position and this is the neck position. However, this switch feels very good. Very positive interaction between all settings, very smooth, and it throws easily. I love this switch. The rest of the components are kind of what you'd expect from a guitar kit in this price range, but that switch is good to go, assuming you wire it correctly. Overall build time for this kit was less than 45 minutes, making it the fastest and easiest kit that I've built to date. Now, when I was building this thing, I did run into a couple of issues. Firstly, I was missing one of the washers for a tuning pig, but don't worry, I did happen to have a direct fit replacement laying around. See, 
no one's ever gonna notice the difference. Secondly, the pick guard fit around the neck was a little bit too tight, so I did have to grind off a little bit to get it to slide up into the neck properly. And thirdly, while the bridge mounting screw holes were not pre-drilled, meaning I could place the bridge wherever I wanted, the string through holes were pre-drilled. So, I went ahead and lined up the bridge with those string through holes so that I could string it through. As you can see here, the bridge is installed at a slight angle. It doesn't really line up with the pick guard very well, and the strings don't go directly over the pickup poles. But perhaps what bothers me the most is that the bridge in this position doesn't actually completely cover the bridge pickup cavity. You can see it poking through on the side there. Now, oddly enough, the strings do align up with the neck how we have it now, but I did install a shim over on this side of the neck pocket when I installed the neck. Now, this is probably fixable. I could move the bridge over about a 16th of an inch, and I can move the shim from this side of the neck pocket to this side of the neck pocket to keep the string alignment properly. However, that is gonna throw off the alignment with the string through holes. So, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to still use those holes with this bridge, or if I'm gonna have to replace the bridge entirely and come up with a different option. But, just so you know, this specific guitar kit didn't have very good alignment, which is kind of a bummer. Now, despite all those criticisms, this Spumoni wood body is absolutely beautiful. I love the wood grain. I love how lightweight it is. The neck has a nice slim C profile to it. It balances really nicely. And so when you build this kit, it does feel really good in the hands. Let's go ahead and have a look at our next kit. This kit right here came from TomTop and it will set you back about $142, which is kind of a weird price, but let's be real. TomTop's kind of a weird company. This kit was by far the worst packaging job that I've ever seen on a guitar kit. Not only did the cardboard box look like it had been through hell and back, but instead of being taped shut with packaging tape, it was actually just wrapped in plastic wrap. I'm honestly shocked this thing actually made it here alive. The body is made of basswood and it has a nice burl veneer. Well, nice is being a bit generous. It has a burl veneer. And in this burl veneer, there's a few chunks of wood missing. And in one place, there's a large chunk of wood missing with nothing left but a little bit of glue to let us know that at some point there was a piece of wood there. Now, oddly enough, I did not find that wood in the packaging. If I did, it wouldn't have surprised me because of how rough the packaging was, but because I didn't find that missing chunk of wood in the box anywhere, what that tells me is that some grossly underpaid employee at the factory looked at this guitar body and decided it was good enough to ship anyway, boxed it up and sent it out. So. Excellent quality control tom top or whatever warehouse you're buying your guitar kits from. That's honestly pretty ridiculous. Also, the body has this weird cut on the bottom where the output jack goes on. I originally thought that that was an issue with just my kit, but when I looked at the stock photo online, I found out that that's the way they're supposed to come for whatever reason. And I guess it's not really a bad thing. It just is weird because tellies don't have that little notch cut off. So just thought you guys might wanna know. Now this kit did come with no holes pre-drilled, which I actually really appreciate because that means that there's no holes to be pre-drilled in the wrong spot like the guitar fetish kit. So it did add a little bit of time to the overall build because I did need to measure and properly place where everything is. Now, that being said, everything does line up perfectly. If you look closely, the bridge lines up with the pick guard, the strings line up with the pickup poles, and the strings line up with the neck. Speaking of the bridge, you'll notice firstly that all the hardware is gold plated, which does give it a kind of cool look for the burl veneer. And the bridge is traditional with just three separate saddles for the six strings, as opposed to the individual saddles that we saw on the guitar fetish kit. Again, like I said, with no holes pre-drilled, there was no hole drilled for the bridge ground connect. And again, it doesn't matter with this style of bridge, but if you plan to put a different bridge on it, it's good to know. And the electronics came pre-wired, but they came pre-wired incorrectly. And the colors were really confusing. When I was looking at it, the neck pickup had a white and a black lead. The bridge pickup had a red and a black lead. And then the hot output were red and black, but they weren't red positive black ground. They were actually reversed with black being hot and red being ground, which is weird. Who uses red for ground? It never makes sense to use a red wire as your ground connection. And that did cause problems for me later when I was trying to figure out how to wire this thing. The neck pocket was nice and sloppy, almost as sloppy as the guitar fetish kit, but maybe just a little bit better. I don't know, when it's that bad, it's tough to tell the difference. This kit, like the guitar fetish kit, also came with some sharp burrs on the fret ends. But unlike the guitar fetish kit, the frets have been leveled, crowned, and sort of polished. It's not a very pretty polishing job, but they attempted at least. Surprisingly, unlike most kits, the nut piece is actually pretty close to the size that you need. And in fact, the way it's set up right now is totally playable and it doesn't go super out of tune. Now, it's not as low as I would like it to be, but as it is, 
it's actually fine. Like I mentioned before, the wiring for this kit was all messed up and I actually did have to redo a lot of it, which added to the build time. Now, if it weren't for me having to spend time figuring out the color codes of the pickups, how to wire them up to the switch and redoing the tone pot, which was wired completely backwards, there's no way that would have worked. And the fact that I had wired the output jack backwards because I had forgotten that the red was the ground instead of the hot, who uses red for ground? Added a little bit of frustration and some extra time to the build. Had it not been for all of that stuff, I probably would have had this thing together in about 45 minutes, but instead I had it together in a little over an hour. Now, all that being said, everything lines up perfectly. It does look pretty good. The basswood has a nice weight to it. It's not lightweight like the baloney wood, but it has a nice weight to it. The neck does have a much thicker U-shaped profile, very similar to a Les Paul. In fact, this neck is actually a little bit thicker than the Les Paul kit that I reviewed. Now that's not a bad thing if that's the kind of profile of neck that you like. It just threw me for a loop switching back and forth between these different kits. When I picked this one up, it did feel a whole lot differently. Now the thicker neck profile, the added weight of the basswood, over the baloney wood of the guitar fetish kit does make this feel like a nice, strong, durable guitar kit. And like I said, the gold hardware and the burl finish do give it a pretty cool and unique look. Okay, this last kit that we're gonna be having a look at is from the Fretwire and it costs $165. Now, that makes it the most expensive kit that we're looking at today, but as we look closer, it's pretty obvious why. Not only that, but I have my frustrations and reservations with Guitar Fetish and with TomTop, but I have zero frustrations with the Fretwire. I love those guys. They take really good care of me and more importantly I know that they're taking really good care of you guys and that alone is worth paying a little bit more for. Top that off with the fact that the owner really likes me and gave me my own personal coupon code Guns and Guitars which will save you $10 off of this kit or any kit at the Fretwire. So this kit's only going to cost you $155 because of your guy on the inside. That's me. I'm the guy on the inside. Now this is a thin line style guitar kit, which means it is a semi-hollow mahogany body with a maple plywood top. The neck has frets that have been beautifully leveled crowned and polished to a mirror shine. And unlike the other two kits, the fret ends were dressed perfectly. If you take a close look, you can actually see that the frets have been clipped just shy of the edge of the fretboard, meaning that I didn't have to do any touch up work whatsoever and it was perfectly smooth. Also, unlike the previous two kits, the neck pocket is a perfectly snug fit. So no shimmy necessary, fits perfect right out of the box. Every single hole on this kit was pre-drilled from the bridge ground connect wire. Yes, there is a bridge ground connect wire hole. The bridge installation screws, the pit guard screws, even the little screws in the back of the tuners and the string trees. Now you guys know that I am typically not a fan of pre-drilled holes on guitar kits, and that's because they rarely come pre-drilled in the exact right spot that you want them. So at some point, I usually end up having to fill and re-drill the holes, and it leaves extra marks in the body and adds extra work in the long run. Extra work that I wouldn't be doing if I had the freedom to just line everything up correctly in the first place. But if you have a look at this thing, everything was pre-drilled in the exact correct spot. I was shocked. So the bridge is centered so that the strings are centered on the neck. And remember, I didn't have to shim the neck. That was already perfect. And when I screwed down the pit guards and the pre-drilled holes, it not only aligned perfectly with the neck pocket, it also aligned the humbuckers perfectly in line with the string spacing. Now what that tells you is what I already know about the fret wire is that they not only offer really quality guitar kits, but in the event that you get a bad one, which does happen from time to time, I've gotten a few bad ones from the fret wire, their customer service takes care of you. You don't have to worry about overseas shipping to China. You don't have to worry about them fighting you and telling you that you didn't select the right fretboard from the drop down menu, they are going to take care of you. They really value you as a customer and they want to make sure that you end up with a guitar that you actually like. I cannot say enough good things about the fret wire when it comes to their customer service. Okay, moving on, the electronics were not pre-wired at all. So while they do take all the guesswork out of where to place and assemble all of your components, they don't necessarily take the guesswork out of wiring the electronics. So you do have to go online to their support site to find the wiring diagram and then wire it up yourself. Now, all that being said, even though I did have to wire up each component individually, because all of the holes were pre-jilled in the correct place for assembly, I did have this whole thing together in just under an hour. You'll notice that this thing didn't come with the typical single coils that a Telecaster usually comes with. It came with these PATH style 
style humbuckers, and I think that's to go along with the classic styling of the original thin line which came with Fender's wide range humbuckers. Now Gibson's PAF style humbuckers are nowhere near what a wide range humbucker sounds like, so it is a little bit funky that they chose those pickups for this kit, but you know what? It does look really cool with this beautiful perloid pick guard, these shiny chrome humbucker covers, and the classic semi-hollow styling of a thin line semi-hollow body. This does have a slim C profile neck like the guitar fetish kit, and while mahogany bodies are typically pretty heavy, because this thing is semi-hollow, it actually does feel pretty good in the hand still. Now there's a lot to love about this kit, but there are two things that I have beef with. The first thing is this nut piece is way too tall. It was the tallest of the three kits, so I am going to have to grind off the base of that before I can even get this thing playable, otherwise all these chords just get bent out of tune as I'm playing. And the other thing I don't care for is this three-way selector switch. This is not your typical Telecaster style selector switch. When I looked underneath, it's actually a printed circuit board style selector switch, which means that soldering it was a little bit different because with your soldering iron you can burn out circuit boards a lot easier than you can burn out the little tabs that you would typically solder your wires to. Not only that, but the switch itself is pretty stubborn. While you can flick it really easily to one position or the other, it just takes a little bit of convincing. I just, you just really have to force it. I'm not a big fan. That'll probably be the first and possibly only thing that I replaced from this kit. Now real quick, I'm gonna summarize for you what we learned about these three kits. This kit here from Guitar Fetish came extremely well packaged. The body is a really cool wood with awesome wood grain and it feels really light in the hands and the overall builds was very fast and very easy. However, the components don't line up exactly where they're supposed to. It was missing a tuner washer and the frets are going to need some serious work as well. This kit here from TomTop was packaged like death. I'm honestly shocked that it made it here from China wrapped in saran wrap. The burl veneer was missing some chunks and it has an odd shaped body. However, the frets are actually in really good shape. The nut piece is cut to the proper height so it does make for a good playable action out of the box. Everything lines up properly as it should and the gold plated hardware and burl veneer do give a really cool unique look to this guitar. This kit here from the Fretwire is the most expensive kit but it does come well packaged and it's got that classic thin line styling with the semi hollow body, perloid pit guard, chrome humbuckers. Everything is pre-drilled and lines up perfectly from the factory. The neck pocket is routed nice and snug for a perfect fit. These frets are absolutely beautiful, polished to a mirror shine, probably very little to no work needed on those at all. The only issues are the extra tall nut piece and the stubborn three-way selector switch. Now I've got my opinion on which kit I feel like is the best value of these three, but that's influenced by the fact that I've actually held and played and heard what these guitars sound like. Now, given the information that I've just given you about the unboxing and building, I want you guys to tell me in the comments which you think is the best value for you. Now, if you'd like to know my opinion on how well these guitars play, as well as hear an awesome back-to-back -back sound demonstration between these three different kits, go ahead and click on part two of this video series, which will be uploaded next week. Until then, go ahead and enjoy this playlist of what I feel like are the best value guitar kits that I've reviewed so far and don't forget to subscribe, click the bell notification so that you are notified when that video is available to watch. I'm Dan, this is Guns of Guitars, thanks so much for watching, I'll see you next week.